Good morning. I am Wanda Gant. I am in the Margaret Johnston Heritage Room housed in the Stanley County History Center, which is located at 157 North 2nd Street, Albemarle, North Carolina. It is across the street from the Albemarle City Hall and from the Central Methodist Church. It houses the museum and the Heritage Room otherwise known as the Genealogy Library. I've been a registrar for the local DAR chapter, the Yatkin River Patriots, for over 10 years. I was the state registrar in 2009 to 2012, and I will be the incoming reg state registrar for the Colonial Dames of 17th Century. I was selected as the outstanding volunteer genealogist for the Southeast District of the United States two different years. One of our goals was to establish as many Stanley County families as possible back to a revolutionary soldier. Our chapter established over 60 families and we put them in a book which we compiled Stanley County Revolutionary Soldiers and Patriots. This can be purchased. I love genealogy. I enjoy helping people find their roots. I can remember as a child asking my mother from where we came. She laughed and said, you're an American. After we determined that I was from several European countries, I agreed that I was truly an American but I wanted to learn more about my family. In teaching, a lady said to me, I just want to know where we came from. I think this is true of everyone, that we want to know our backgrounds. We want to know about our family. Are you the one that does the family history? Are you the one that keeps the family genealogy? Do you know your history? It is very important that you know your family so that you can tell your children, your grandchildren, nieces and nephews. Genealogy is the fastest growing adult hobby. There are many ways to do it. You may want to write your family memories in a book or you may want to do different sources. I'm going to show a couple of things that I have done uh, and, and when I show you these, I want you to be thinking how you can do these for your family. Okay, uh, several years ago, we videoed my mother and father, and then I took Photoshop at the community college and scanned many, many pictures, enhanced them, increased the them so that I could put the label around them. This was, uh, I then had a professional finish it up. He did 15 copies of this and that was my Christmas present that year. Another way is a scrapbook. And one of the first things I suggest right off the bat is that you get some plastic inserts so that you keep your documents in there. In this scrapbook I have a pedigree chart. I have many family pictures. I have copies of legal documents, the birth certificates, the death certificates, the marriage license. So you think how you want to do it, whether you want to do a story, a scrapbook, a CD, or as I have done all three of them. The first thing you want to do is you want to interview the family members. And I know several of you will say, but I'm the oldest one in my family. So you need to start where you are. Some of the things that you might want to know is, where did grandpa go to school? How did he get there? Did he walk? What did he do for lunch? Did he carry his lunch as most of them did? What was in his lunch pail? How did you spend your holidays? No doubt with family, but did you have special Christmas traditions that you did? 
What did you do for birthday? What was father's occupation? What church did they attend? Because the Lutherans did infant baptism, and when they did that, many, many times they put who the parents were. So after you have compiled what you know, then it's time to think about putting it all on paper. Today we'll begin with a printable pedigree chart. You will see there that there is a link that you can download this, put it on your computer, save it, and then type into it. Be sure that you label it, save it, and put it someplace where you remember where it is in your computer because we don't want it just flying out there in La La Land, but save it maybe on the desktop where you know where it is. The wonderful thing about this is you can start typing on it today, save it, come back two days later, add some more information. Then after you finish printing it out, after you've finished this, you can print it out. You can still continue as long as you want on that. Now, looking at, and, and, and this pedigree chart has been compiled by the Family Magazine, and they have given us permission to use this. As we start our pedigree chart, you are number one. So you will put your name here on the line as your name. You'll want to use your full name, not nickname, not, uh, not just initials. So put the full name on this. Because I do so much with DAR, I'm going to tell you how they ask for them. They say that you would do the day, three letters of the month, and then the full four numbers. So today is 8th of December 2020. Many times people would want to put 12, 8, slash 2020. The problem with that is many times people later on would say, oh, is that December 8th or is that August 12th? So if you put down the day, the month, and the year, then it's clear. And you want to put all four letters, all four numbers of the year because shortly we will be in 1800, 1900, 1700, and possibly on back. The next line is for the location. This would be the location that I was born in or that you were born in. So start with the smallest and go to the largest. We are in Albemarle, Stanley County, and you'll want to put a CO after county, and then NC for North Carolina. The next line is when you were married, doing the same, the day, the month, and the year, and then the location. Now obviously you're watching this, so you don't worry about the death at this particular time, but you notice right below that is there's a space for your spouse. If there are more than one marriage, there's an additional space that you could do that. Now, when we come up to the top, Number two is your father, and be sure to put his full name. The first birth name, the middle name, and the last name. Once again, birth date, mar uh, location, marriage, location, and if he is deceased, you would put the death. You might also want to put right be be below that, if he's be deceased, where he is buried. Number three is mother. Once again, the full name, but you're only going to use her maiden name because her married name is up here. And you notice that it only has the space for the birth and death because the marriage is at the top. Now, we go across, uh, then this is father all the way across here, mother all the way across here. Be sure to keep 
all your documents.